Hey, welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff. And if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it is dedicated to creating an alternative lifestyle design that improves quality of life for both people and the planet. Exploring alternatives to the daily grind through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life raw. Uh, boy, oh boy, we've got, I mean, what day is it? What, what do we got here? It's March, uh, April, March. It's April 9th. And uh, we are in this crazy, crazy stuff. Oh, before we get we, we get on with this, uh, parental discretionary, uh, be advised, this is a potty mouth podcast. So, yeah, let's just get that out of the way. Uh, I want to talk about stationary RV lifestyle design, which I've been living for the past three years, off and on. And I want to talk about the uh, benefits of doing something like this and why you should do this and why our present economy, our present lifestyle design is... It's not working out too well for a lot of people out there. And I've said this a lot on my show that there's, uh, I met a few economists and they've told me that uh, most people have, the average American, I think seven out of 10 has barely just a few thousand dollars, like three, four, five thousand dollars in the bank at any given time. And now we get this thing where we're shut down like we are right now. And all it takes is like two months, three months, depending on how much you've designed or not designed your life. Only you know that, that you only have so much to, so much time and it's all about money. And when that money runs out, you will lose your home. You will lose a lot of things, but we're here to fix that kind of stuff. And I'm here to share with you guys that, look, there's always a way out. That's the premise of this show. Every th- Why should you listen to someone like me? Um, because I've taken, I'm not a millionaire. I'll tell you that. I don't have a jet plane. I don't have a limousine. I drive an old 96 F-350 pickup truck a diesel a 7.3 liter that's the loud truck that you hear when i'm uh when i'm working i try to squeeze these podcasts in but it's nothing special other than you can rebuild it for life that it's sustainable and better than sustainable it's resilient yeah it stacks functions it has very many uses for me and it's not about the appearance it's not about what the truck looks like although it's starting to grow on me i'm like that dude you know it's my truck yeah it's my ford Built mother fucking America. <laughs> you know, I get a lot of dudes looking at me. Uh, used to, you know, back in the day, uh, there used to be women involved. And uh, nowadays there's none. And it's all about these guys with uh, that love trucks, you know. Getting back to the subject here is we want to get you guys off and running. And you need some sort of uh, ideas. And I'm sure there's a lot of people throwing stuff out there. But I'm not going to steer you in the area where you need to make millions of dollars and everything. And I'm not against money at all. I guess the people that I'm looking at right now is mostly the poor, the middle class, and probably the so-called uppity up class that thought they had their shit together and something like this comes along and knocks you on your ass and you need to figure out, well, what can I do Uh, besides blowing your brains out and doing stupid shit like that and freaking out? You know, it doesn't help anybody. There's ways to do that. And I believe that the RV lifestyle design is the best bet no matter where you are in the United States. Uh, but it's maybe not Alaska, <laughs> you know, certain areas where it's just freezing, freezing, freezing cold. Uh, I don't think it's, it's going to work for you, but other parts in the world too. And I'm not too sure because I haven't ventured that far out, but I know in the United States that there are many RV parks that you can actually live in. And I want to get into details. I know some of you guys would be embarrassed to do something like that, but you have no options at certain, if you're in that position, Other than to do something like this, otherwise you end up living in a tent or you end up being a leather tramp or a rubber tramp, you know, living in your vehicle. Let's jump in. I want to share with you guys the benefits of an RV lifestyle design, and I've been doing it for three years. Also, I didn't get to finish there. I cut myself off. Quiet, we're talking. I don't want to have to tell you again. (laughs) Uh, I take off. I've done this for six years. I make enough money to where I'm able to take off with my kids. And I've said it over and over again in there. And that's, that's the takeaways. That's what I have is you'd ask, well, what's my foundation? What do I stand on? No, it's not millions of dollars, but it's enough money to only work eight to nine months out of the year, take three to four months off and go wherever the fuck I want with my kids and go camping and experience life or just do nothing. Or in the present situation right now, be minimally affected by what's going on in contrast to most people I see around me. Let's get into it. Why? Because you may need to start over. Um, You may need to figure out a place to put your family or yourself. 
and there's not very many other options and I think it's the most cheapest option and I want to talk about a few of those here. First of all, there's no first and last payments at most of them, almost all of them. I think there isn't any because it's pretty much a revolving door. So yeah, that gets you off the track. I think the, the biggest one, and I'm, I want to do an entire series on this, but I want to hear what you guys think first. But I'm organizing one. I've gotten the pipeline of exactly what to buy, how to buy, what to look for, maintenance of living in a trailer, and all those kind of things. Like To get you guys started if you decide to go on this venture, I want to get you guys prepared and share the uh, expertise that I've uh, experienced in my RV lifestyle design. And um, so yeah... It's, there's no first and there's no last. That helps out tremendously. And as far as we look at on the subject of price, which I don't have in my notes here, you know, I live in Sunnyside, California, north, northern San Diego, and I'm paying $850 a month. That's a lot. Uh, there's places in uh, like Oregon, Texas, where it's like $350 a month. All right, guys, $350 a month. You just get yourself a rig. Uh, I mean, there's so much I can tell you about this here is that even if you don't have a truck, which you should, you should have a fort. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but if you don't have a truck, there's there's many ways that we can talk about where there's pre-existing uh, trailers. There's a lot of uh, old timers that live in them. Sometimes they pass away or... Uh, you know, they just got to get rid of it. And the, the thing sitting there, you can just pick it up. You don't even have to move it. So there's many, many options. You just have to go out there and look. Less chores and more work or leisure time. So that's one thing I've noticed of why you should consider doing full-time RV. And I think I explained that correctly, right? We're not driving around everywhere unless you decide to. It's stationary. You can stay for month to month for years. I know people at the, the park I'm living at right now who've been here for like shit, like 25, 30 years. So, uh, but yeah, there's less, uh, less to clean. And uh, I think if you guys are hit by this uh, um, recession, so to speak, we don't know what's happening here on April. What the fuck did I say? Ninth, I think it is or seventh. Uh, you know, you need time to figure out what the hell you're doing. And I think that's one of my biggest lessons on this subject here in my life is to be able to quiet the storm. You see, there's a lot of fine print. I just got done doing my taxes, going over uh, details with my CPA paying off all kinds, it's the fine print basically. All that stuff just starts nitpicking you, nitpicking you. No wonder why people are so unhappy. And no wonder why they're so agitated and irritated. I am as well, by just the little bit that I have to do. And it's those things that we, you can't even think straight, you know? So getting yourself in a situation like this is the perfect example of, of putting yourself in a place where you can calm the shit storm down so you can think clearly. And a lot of us, I think, when you look at a house, even in a mobile home, you know, a three-bedroom place or something, there's a lot to clean. There's uh, carpets that need to be vacuumed and all kinds of different things. Whereas the trailer, which, by the way, I live in a 30-footer, 29-foot to be exact, you can clean that thing in probably less than an hour. Wiping down the counters and everything is very small. It's very tiny uh, and very simple. So I can't think of a better way to simplify your life. But if you're looking and you need to just think your way out of this thing, you need to figure out something else, you need to go get another job, or you need to figure out how to get a job, or start a new business, or just for Christ's sakes, just to relax for a minute, to take a fucking breath, you know, for a week, two weeks or so, you can do that because you just took the overhead down low, and the maintenance, the life maintenance of it is pretty, pretty simple. There's a lot of details to it, but I'm just kind of skimming uh, to get you guys in the mode to find out if this is something that you even want to do, and if you want to listen to part two. Uh, another one I've got on my notes here is your motor home. Uh, you can actually purchase one and you can put it on non op and meaning that you don't have to pay the registration. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that as long as you register it non operational, you don't have to pay the registration, which cost me about $186. I think it was a year for my tags, even though it's my, my, my trailer's parked, uh, you still have to keep the registration stickers up. And you also do uh, the difference though in a motor home is that you can put the non up and I don't think you have to pay anything if you went to sell if you wanted to drive it then you have to reactivate it so that's that's kind of a, for somebody who's really hurting I prefer the trailer myself because I don't want to deal with the motors and stuff like that you got things like a buddy of mine just now had the rats and mice eat his fuel lines and his tractor from sitting outside in upstate in uh, Oregon and we have the same thing here. They'll start chewing electric wires, shitting and pissing in the motor. And it's just another thing that you got to maintenance. But it, I thought I'd throw it out there. Um, property taxes and HOA fees. I consider living in the, um, the park 
as HOA fees. Um, you know, it costs eight hundred and fifty dollars. But for those of you who would live, like, say, Oregon or Texas, for like five hundred dollars a month, you know, three hundred dollars a month, um, uh, which is getting to my next one here, that's like uh, property taxes. I think in Oregon, it was three hundred a month or something like that, uh, or hundred and fifty. I couldn't remember. For my uh, my mother had a house up there, the Strega, and um, up here on a house that's like five hundred thousand. I think it's one point one percent that you'd be paying on property taxes if you owned a home. So if you'd weigh out the amount that you're paying, they're throwing away on rent that you would think, uh, it kind of balances itself out. It's, uh, it's pretty low. Uh, the HOA fees, it's kind of like living in an HOA. There's a lot of places uh, that are nice. Uh, mine's kind of in the middle where they don't give a shit, but they do give a shit. You know, so they don't want things like hanging your laundry on your fence, you know, all day and making it look ratty tatty. But I've seen some that looked ratty tatty just straight up trailer park like uh where kid rock probably was born <laughs> but yeah um i but the one thing that you get with this whole with all these fees and everything is your water and your trash and basically a gardener all comes included so you got to weigh in the hoa fees or prop things that you'd be paying on property taxes or if you're renting a house uh if you are right now the gardener and you having to do the work and pay, you have to pay for your water and your trash. Over here, everything's included, water and trash. The only thing you pay for is your electrical consumption and also using propane, which we'll get in the details of uh, part four, or I'm sorry, part two, if you guys are interested. Again, message me, uh, uh, comment uh, below, I guess, over here. Let me know what you guys wanna hear if you guys want me to do part two. Otherwise, I'm gonna skip on to something else. Uh, I've got a couple other ones down the pipeline here. So. Yeah, it's basically the lowest rent, guys. You are not going to find an apartment in a house. And I don't give a shit if you're even in, in like Oregon uh, or Texas. You may, but for $500 a month? Come on, man. I'd like to add, too, that they've got uh, like, you know, 45-foot trailers. These huge things, if you can afford that. A uh, good thing to do, too, is we if this economy, if people are hurting, a lot of people are going to get rid of their, uh, their little sand rails, their toys and stuff, you know, their desert camping shit. And the trailer is going to be one of them. And that's when you can go and pick yourself up something on a really good, reasonable deal. I'd also like to add to, which we're going to get into part two, the notes I have there is a lot of people go with the tiny houses. Um, now, what's nice about moving into an, an RV trailer or a motorhome is that everything's already set up. The tub, the heater, the uh, elect electrical, everything's already built. You cannot beat the price of something that's already built, already set in place. Uh, in contrast to building it yourself with a tiny house, you're looking at, uh, to give you guys an idea, for $10,000 to $20,000, you can get yourself a really nice good rig, especially in times like this if it gets hard. Whereas in contrast to like a tiny house, I think the minimum and all the labor, and if you paid somebody to do it, it's probably like sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Granted, I think that they're built a little better, but uh, we don't want to go too far in the details. But that, as I said, I've, I bought my rig for around ten, or no, I think I spent twelve grand on it. Yeah, it's a 2017, and it's a really good deal. Uh, it's got a nice slide out and everything, but I want to stick to get back to the notes here. Um, so embarrassment. I preach on this show all the time that you should not give a shit what people think of you. Uh, I've gotten a lot of pushback from people. I've got a, I've got a lot of uh, stuff from people, they, the way they treat me. They treat me different. They think that I'm poor. And that I'm a lesser of a human being for living in an RV park. But you know what? You want to know what's more embarrassing, I think? Is all these people that will probably lose their shit from this coronavirus thing. From this lockdown. And they're living on the streets. Get rid of, They lost the car. They lost the house. They lost everything. Well, guess what? That's pretty embarrassing, man. Because you know you fucked up. Uh, I think, as I said, it's not the aesthetics of things. It's the functionality of things. And that's what we're looking to get you guys. Especially those of you guys who are hurting. Or those of you who, who want to get ahead. Uh, embarrassment, I think you need to wad that stuff up. That ego shit needs to get thrown in the trash because right now that stuff ain't helping anybody, is it? So to me, embarrassment, no, you don't have, you don't have to do this forever too, guys. It's such an easy, there's it's month to month. You can, it's an easy buy-in and it's an easy buy out. Once you get enough, you think that you're in the, in a good road and you've got yourself fixed and you've got yourself an emergency fund and you're out of debt and you got yourself a life plan. You can easily be gone in a week. You could be out, you know? Now we're going to get into transportability of, of these things. Don't like it? Get busy. 
So I don't mind. I will tell you guys, I live next to a freeway and it's right over a ridge and you can hear this thing and there's traffic. It drives me nuts. You know, we're, and we're by, uh, it's, it's North San Diego County. So we got Camp Pendleton down the, uh, a couple miles away, maybe about uh, 20 miles away. You got these helicopters that'll go over. Sometimes you can't even hear yourself on the phone. Uh, it's, it's crazy. The traffic ones is what gets me though. And, uh, yeah, I don't really like it. I don't, and it's very confining. There's, there's hardly any privacy, you know, you got to close your windows up and everything. You're like stacked on each other. Although I will say a lot of the million dollar homes that I service in North San Diego County in this big city city, their homes are so close together. You can literally, if you're, if you left your blinds down, you're taking a piss, you can literally hear the person next to you. If their bathrooms are aligned, you know, you can toss a roll of toilet paper from one house to the other. They got no yard. So all I see in those places that you have maybe a little bit more distance than you do from each other in privacy living in an RV park, but not much, only by a couple of feet. So something to take in consideration. I don't want to live stacked up on some. Look at these houses. They're pretty much stacked up. You can hear every single word your neighbor's saying. Sometimes, you know, just basically I'll leave it at that. So yeah, you don't like it, get busy. And I think that's the whole thing. That's what I do. I am a podcaster uh, doing these videos. Uh, I make, I'm working on online businesses. I've got, I'm spin farming, which means I'm utilizing some people here who have money and they don't know what to do with their property or, or like the, the farm I'm utilizing right now, they got injured so they can't grow their food. So they have me coming in and I'm paying the water bill and giving them an exchange for using their property, giving them some fruits and vegetables. And we have a whole system worked out. I got land to work with. I'm so excited to teach you guys those things. The opportunities I can see everywhere right now. It's just if we get in the right mind frame and get into a position like I'm talking about right now where you get yourself in an RV with a low overhead and then the magic starts happening. So let's move forward then. Yes, just get busy, man. There's all kinds of shit you can do. Just don't be, if you don't like it, don't be home. It gives you motivation, I guess is what I'm saying, to just get out there and get your side hustle or, or start doing resumes and working maybe two jobs to get yourself back up and running or living like I do so close to the beach. I've got within, within 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes given in traffic in either direction. I could either be in the desert. I could be up in these mountains with snow, or I could be at the ocean right now. If there wasn't the a quarantine thing going on, I got plenty of places to go guys. And I'm out in the country I, and it gives you diversity is what I like. So utilize what you have around you. I, I would say though, for the most part, if somebody asked me my shitty opinion, you should get the fucking work, man. That's the thing that's scaring me right now is people, just seem like everything's going to go back to normal. Who knows whether times get really bad or times go good. You should still be doing these things. These are things good for you, good for your planet, no matter what the situation is. But you really, I think we all need to get our asses in gear. And I think that's something that most people don't want to hear. So I won't beat that one up. Uh, now the other one, you don't like it. Move. Remember we we're talking about portability. You don't like the park you're in. Uh, I'm limited here. There's only this park, I believe, in all North San Diego County. And there's a line of people waiting to get in. Oh, there's two. That's right. There's two over here where you can live in. Uh, but they're both pretty much uh, under $1,000 a month. Mine's eight fifty, dollars And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm limited. So I only got those two options. So but most of you guys, it's like say states of Oregon, Washington, Arizona, Texas, Florida, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but all those areas, you'd have to look in. You can Google map it and, and see the, the prices and everything, see where the, the uh, um, RV parks are at. So let's just say uh, I didn't want to be here anymore and I wanted to move to Oregon or I wanted to go to Texas or something. I can literally, in a matter of days, pack everything up and uh, move to another state. Or I can move simply to another park, another area, and constantly keep searching for better things. Say I want to live closer to a major city like San Diego, I can start inching my way if they had the, some more RV parks there, getting closer so I can do more work. Maybe the work is, is more uh, progressive out in San Diego County or San Diego uh, proper, the big city, I can actually move my trailer to where the money is. Back in the crash of 2008, uh, which I own my own business, that was a lot of people that were going to Phoenix, Arizona for some reason. And I met a lot of people who were like, I wish we could move, but we got to sell our house or we're in a lease. We've got to finish the year out. Having a month to month, having a trailer that you can pick up and, and leave with, it makes all the difference in a situation like that. And who knows, God, I hope we don't hit that, but we may. 
but it gives you that portability for you to be able to move around and just take your home like a turtle shell, man, like a backpack and just simply move. All right, next on the list here, resale investment ideas. So for those of you who are handy, and I think those of you who are not, uh, you can learn. It's very simple. The, these RVs, these, these trailers are not built really to live in full time, although they can handle it if you do the proper maintenance. And we, I want to get in that in part two. But a lot of them, and when you have kids, <laughs> oh man, I don't want to be degrading. It's jokes, folks. I joke a lot, so don't get offended. But these fucking little angels start ripping everything apart. My door's cracking. I got this beautiful crown molding thing that goes over the side of my pop out. They rip that thing off. There's wood and things. It's just a pain in the ass. But to get away from that, not offend anybody. Sorry if I offended you. Not my, not my, uh, my intention. But what I'm noticing in my trailer is there's a lot of things that I can tear out and redo and make this thing more comfortable, more to, to utilize more storage space. For instance, I'll tell you guys, there's a, a little love seat that folds out into the shitty, you know, those fucking beds that we used to have in the eighties and nineties where you sleep and that comes out of the, the couch and your back's like literally has a bar going up your lower back. Yeah. Not nice. Plus the utilization that rats go in there and my special needs daughter, she's uh, 12 years old in diapers. They ate all like five packages of diapers, probably like 80 bucks worth of diapers. They just shredded it all because it has this little storage compartment, like a drawer, which when you sit on the couch, it smashes down uh, from them jumping on it and uh, you, you can barely open the, the door anymore. So I looked at, why don't I make a bigger cabinet underneath made out of solid wood and you can build everything lightweight if you want with like quarter inch plywood or even just like this paper thin uh, uh, plywood they've got using battens, one by two stri uh, fur stripping and things like that and some screws. But I can make myself an entire wrap proof box. I can make a storage in there for diapers and canned foods and whatever. And then I can go put some memory foam. This thing, by the way, would have like a little latch or a, or a pull. I can't describe it right now, but basically a little door you can open up on the top and you can access everything you need. And then on top of that bed, which is very uncomfortable, it's, you can't lay down on it because it's maybe about four feet wide. Uh, cut the uh, the, the uh, wall, the divider that I have that divides the uh, the uh, dinner table. I can cut that out and lay a, lay a nice piece of plywood on top with a memory foam with maybe six inches of memory foam. Cover that all nice, nice up with a uh, sewn cloth fabric of my choice or just put a bed sheet on it and actually have it serve as a bed, storage, and also a place to, uh, as a couch. Now the TV's right there. It would work out tremendously. Uh, so those are the type of things I'm looking at. I mean, you can even kind of redo the bottom of your trailer. I there's a lot of details I can go in, but basically I just want you to get you guys your whistle wet with like, look, you can do some resale investment things on these things. You can load them up full of solar panels and you can learn to do this yourself in your spare time. Uh, put yourself an inverter and everything in there, get a load of batteries, have the whole thing running off propane and solar. You can re reseal an old one rehabilitate it and actually flip it and make money and yes there's people who flip rvs and make money off of them but i can see on my way with the water heater situation and all that where i can make all kinds of different things where this thing's more livable and more comfortable in the way they built it um so yeah there's resale investment ideas and i have my idea was since they're not really built to live in long long term uh before it starts to go give yourself about eight my, mine's about five years five-year trade-up plan. I would say, uh, depending on, uh, you can't really go in years. I would say if you start to see yours wearing and tearing where the interior is starting to get damaged from moisture or things like that, maybe you should sell it, get yourself another one and keep every five to eight years, keep rotating them and buy yourself a newer model. Uh, we're going to get in details in, on, a, on a, the episode two, if you guys want, but also one thing to take in consideration is some RV parks won't allow certain years in. They want like basically, I think anything that's 10 years old, uh, any, anything beyond 10 years old from present is not as acceptable. Although I've seen uh, some stuff worked out, but yeah, trade up, man, to make a trade up plan and maybe turn it into investment. Um, um, another good thing about RVs is that you have amenities like the jacuzzi we have here. Oh, I love me my jacuzzi. Uh, being a roofing contractor, that's one of my main businesses is, uh, oh, and they have a nice one too, man. Uh, those jets on your back and the water's hot. It really sucks because like early in the morning I'm driving and it's just ice cold. 
Uh, you can see like like the frost sometimes on the bridge over going over this uh, lake, which I'll talk about. And uh, you can just see the heat coming off that fucking jacuzzi, man. And I'm like, fucking mimosas, mama mama mimosas, and just and sitting in there with a with a fresh orange juice and champagne mimosa first thing in the morning. I'm like, oh, uh, and then you're heading to work. But yeah, we got jacuzzi. There's a swimming pool in the summertime, which I utilize for exercise for my daughter. And guess what? As I said, everything's maintained for you. Just like the gardener blowing the leaves and everything else, you got a swimming pool. And we got the jacuzzi. Over here, we got a, a free fishing. They've got a pretty decent sized lake. And I've seen people pulling catfish out. Uh, I've caught a bluegill, a bass. Uh, they got all kinds of stuff. I, think, I don't think they put any trout in it, though. But yeah, there's hiking. Around the back, we got a dam where you go behind. I took some pictures, and I think I might have posted it on my private um, Facebook group. But yeah, and there's poison oak that your fucking daughter can give you every year, a couple times a year. I already got it once this year when it warmed up a little bit because she's out rolling around in the shit. Oh, man, it's no joke. I hate that. Uh, that's the one problem I have about this place is the poison oak is everywhere. But yeah, there's, there's all kinds of trails and hiking and things, uh, fishing, and there's parks. They got a little swing set over here. Some of them have basketball courts and volleyball. You know, there's all kind. There's some really bitching cool spots, man, to live in that you wouldn't really get if you lived uh, in certain places in the neighborhood. So that's something to consider. Uh, storage is a, is uh, a thing. I've, I'm running basically, you guys. I'm running construction business out of a fucking RV. All right. Uh, so a lot of these places you'd have to check have storage areas. Mine is only two dollars a fucking foot. So I went and bought myself a 30-foot uh, cargo container, storage container, one of the steel ones with the doors. Got it all leveled, had it delivered. I think it was about three grand or so. And uh, I've got all my working stuff in there, all nice and locked. And there's a storage area there where I have uh, my dump trailer. I have a Vino's trailer. And I might even get a secondary vehicle. But it's like my yard. I work everything out of that place. I take all of my trash and I dump it in my, my uh, dump trailer which is a trailer, if you guys don't know, it it lifts up and dumps everything. So it's, it's like my trash bin there. All my tools and supplies, they all stay inside the, uh, the uh, um, uh, what do you call it, storage uh, unit. And uh, yeah, and I've got my, my uh, truck where I, I back up my trailer and I park it all there, all for $2 a foot. Uh, if you guys do need to get storage, there's things you don't want to get rid of. There's always storage units for like $100 a month, at least here. I'm sure they're cheaper in places like Oregon, Texas, and Arizona. But yeah, get yourself a storage unit, and you could be living for... God, I'm going to say with a storage unit, not here in California, but probably Oregon or Texas, you could be living... Your expenses would be like $600, $700 a month, man. That tops $800 a month. And you think about that. Everything's paid for but your electricity. Um... The last one I got is a haha uh, is my uh, mailing address. So if you're running a business and talking about the embarrassment part, there is a little uh, element of I got to look the part for society. I already look like shit. doesn't help that I live in an RV park for them. Uh, works out great in my favor because I don't pay for an office, although I charge for office and, and the regular fees that I have to do. I pocket the money in case I ever need, need to do it. Um, but I'm not ripping anybody off. It's very, I work out of my shed. Sometimes I work out of my truck to be able to type out uh, contracts and stuff. But those of you who are worried about mail, I put on there that talk to the people at the desk and all the mail that comes in here says either sweet number, blah, 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 or I just have my mail delivered just strictly to the park. It does not give my, my actual space number, but you can put sweet 101 or something like that and still get your mail. And it looks like a good business. So there's ways to finagle and fandangle and do a bunch of shit. So you guys, I am scared to fucking death for a lot of you. And I think that you guys really should consider something like RV living. And if you're hurting and you are, you're going down, you need to calm, you need to calm the shit storm down. And I think this is the only thing I can think of right now because there is not a lot of jobs out there and there may not be a lot. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, I think you guys need to go back and listen to the show. We're going to get a little more aggressive and get more tactical uh, to help you guys figure out why someone like me is least affected, minimally affected by this thing. I usually take off my summers and unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that this year and go traveling with my kids because I'm sitting home right now and I decided to close my business possibly. Uh, I've been out for about a week now and, uh, but it doesn't hurt me. I figured I'd take my vacation earlier. My mini retirements is what I call them. I take them every year and I've been doing this for six years. I've got over a year's supply of money in the bank. Over a year. I, I did the math the other day. If I sat living like I am right now, 
I could probably squeeze this thing for maybe even more than two years. Uh, I've got at least, I would say, 60 days, 60 supply, uh, 60 day, two month supply of food, uh, and not organic vegetables and things like that. Uh, because they go bad and they can't really keep and I'm I'm learning a lot from this whole lockdown thing and things that I can improve in my life I think there's always room for improvement uh, for things for instance for the vegetables and stuff I should get myself a dehydrator I think and get me uh, a bunch of foods that are that are uh, on sale that are cheaper from the farmers markets it's gonna go bad like things like mushrooms and carrots and uh, tomatoes and I should can a bunch of stuff I should dehydrate a bunch of stuff and get my food supply even larger than what I already have and make it without uh, the preservatives and, and the cost just some elbow grease but yeah I'm learning a lot and uh, I am so happy and so grateful to have done the work that I've done in alternative lifestyle design. I'm actually thinking about changing the show from up and in it to the alternative lifestyle design podcast. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, I don't really have, uh, I don't think I have a lot of followers. You can't really tell on the podcast and, uh, but it might screw things up if I change the name. Uh, from what we've already started but yeah I was thinking about the alternative lifestyle design podcast I think it's very much needed in the world right now no matter where you guys are at I think that you need to start thinking of what you can do and I'm here as a public servant to try to help you guys in any way and as I said we're going to get more tactical uh, you guys are interested in me doing the RV one mention it below message me comment and I've got a whole list on it um, I've got I want to tackle this whole COVID-19 coronavirus epidemic what it's doing to the economy, what it's doing to people, and what we can do to combat it. Because I got a lot of stuff for you guys, and I cannot wait to get back to uh, full-time podcasting. And if I take my mini retirement now, I can be with you guys every single day. And I know that you guys need an element of trust. And I think that's what I want to do, is I want to actually be with you guys every single day and kind of show you exactly what I do all day. So you guys kind of know that I'm not fluffing here. You know, I think there's a lot of fucking assholes out there that are saying they're doing stuff, but they're not. I guarantee you, I'm not affiliated. I don't make money. I'm paying to do these podcasts. I'm, I'm paying money to do them. I'm not affiliated. I don't have, I don't have anything other than I want to get out and help people. And I love giving the message out. And that would be like wonderful to what I hear for this. If any of this stuff helps people, definitely let me know because it lights my fire, man. So that's the show. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it's been a while since I've I've done, but I'm back. Um, what do we always uh, go check it out at? Uh, there's a YouTube channel. There's TikTok, and uh, although I haven't been doing anything on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, any of those, but I'm gonna start working up to it. But go back there. There's some content that I put that you won't find anywhere else. There's the iTunes and uh, Spotify that where you can listen to the podcast. I think I've mentioned everything there. Uh, but as I always say, guys, do not lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Oh yeah, go have yourself a near-life experience. Live it, love it, own it, and bone it, my friends.